background is in optical network, but right now working in the sensor network. This is another research fellows, uh, Michael. This is the hardware guys. If you come up with an idea, he will come with the hardware to match the idea. This is responsibility and this play a very important role in our sensor network group developments. He's one of the key guys that look into the hardware uh, perspective. And then uh, here is some introductions to the mobile communications. As I mentioned earlier, this form is made up by three parts. The first part is the broadband and optical. The second part is the mobile communications. Uh, here is some introductions to the mobile communications. Yeah, this group, they are one of the key players to the mobile VC. Mobile VC is uh, more, more or less it's like research forums. It's funded by the industry. Uh, a lot of those mobiles, uh, big mobiles company, Motorola, uh, put in the money to encourage different universities and different industry to develop something new. They have been involved in these uh, research forums since 1970s when this kind of forum group has been set up. Here is the key player for the mobile communication. Professor John Donald. He is retiring soon, but he is well known in the UK mobile communications. And Dr. James Owens. Basically, Dr. James, I don't see him very often, he is very busy. So, uh, we've worked a lot on the AAA the conferencing, and uh, he's active, actively involved in those organizing the meeting and runs different projects. But these two are the main guys for the mobiles. And ESP, ESP, the chairperson, is also funded by the industry. Same. And there will more work on the physical layer. Right. That they come with the chip start or some kind of new design. And this Professor Robert Stewart is the key person for the DSP. That's the structure of SIGCOM. The SIGCOM basically is made up by three different uh, groups. Workbank, Mobiles, and DSP. Right now, I want to bring, uh, bring you uh, one of the new activities happening in Scotland, the whole Scotland. Right now, the policy for the Scotland government is they encourage the university to work together. Because seriously, in the, for the university, when they try to apply for funding or try to talk to the industry, they see each other as a competitor. They fight each other to attract the attention. But right now, we change the strategy. We don't do that. We form together, we work together. For instance, here is the Glasgow Research Partnership. In this partnership, Strata, my, my university, work together with the Glasgow University. Strata is very good in the management, applications, network design. But Glasgow, they are solid in the physical. Optical, they want fabrications, and then they are strong, very strong in the physical layer. Therefore, when we work together, we almost can go for, apply for different kinds of funding that related to communications. So it doesn't matter if you want to have some kind of new optical level design, or it doesn't matter if you want to have some kind of wireless network design, we can do that. Because we know the classical university is strong in the physical, and we know ourselves is good in the network and management quality of service that part. Therefore, 
we form together, we work together. And this is not the end. Here you can see, but this is the, some, some kind of interruptions, the expected, the expected uh, of, for, for classical university and the expected from, from, from the short class. The Glasgow Research Partnership don't actually stop there. We have a bigger plan. This bigger plan is why the partnership stop in Glasgow. This partnership actually encouraged by the government extend the whole to the whole Scotland. Different universities work together in a big research group. This is one of the major major uh, strategy for the Scottish government. In the next couple of years, a lot of money will be put into this Scottish research partnership to encourage cooperation. And then they actually put down high-speed optical fiber to, to link up different universities. Therefore, for instance, one of the cases right now we are trying to do is for the Glasgow University, they designed the hardware. We threw the high-speed optical network. We test the hard hardware. And this fiber link actually connect further up to the Zenman group and then Stirling University. And at the end, the terminal of the optical, optical line, we actually put in the YMAX. Therefore, we also have the platforms to do some kind of YMAX study. If you see the whole picture, we have the optical high-speed backbone, we have the radio and to provide the signal to the university or the residential. This provides a very good platform for us to test out the next generation high-speed network. This high-speed network allows us to bring multi-new surveys to the user, which are mainly residential or commercial. Because right now, our, our, our internet is mainly from the telephone line. The telephone line, this kind of infrastructure, will not survive for the next couple of years. It will freeze out totally. The copper wire is impossible to deliver the demand you require, the bandwidth you require. Therefore, we need to look for the next generation of network structure. Are you going to bring optic fiber to every household? Yes, it's one of the solutions, but it will be very costly. Therefore, the Scottish government looked into high-speed optical backbone, but low-cost access, wireless access to the individual households. And we have this infrastructure, and we have this research is going on. so much for the introductions for the background. Right now I would like to talk more about the wireless sensor network. The presentations here today is evolutions and applications of sensor wire wireless sensor network. Here is the pipeline. When we talk about the evolutions, then we need, we need to summarize what is happening what is happening currently? We will give you a first summary of current developments and then we will talk about some of the hardware applications and then I will bring you to a point why we need evolution, why we need to do something so critical to bring out a new generation of sensor network. Firstly, let me quickly, quickly go through what is wireless sensor network. I believe most of you have the understanding or have a very good understanding of the wireless sensor network. Wireless sensor network is made up by a lot of different sensor nodes. This sensor node is low cost, can be mass produced, and 